Ne mutăm la un alt invitat care este aici în sală, un, spunem așa din culise cu un apropiat al Fundației Alături de Voi. De ce? Pentru că vă, deja a apărut informația și mulți dintre știți că în România va apărea prima instituție financiară de, dedicată exclusiv finanțării operatorilor de economie socială, AFIN, care se întâmplă mult cu suportul FBA, Federația Europeană a Băncilor Etice și uh, uh, Europene și Alternative. Tocmai de aceea le invit pe domnul Daniel Sorosa, la alături de noi, este secretar general FBA și astăzi vine să ne oferă o perspectivă cu privire la noul curent global care transformă banking-ul și investițiile. So, the uh, finance, social finance, alternative and ethic, the trends in Europe. Thank you so much, welcome to Yash. <laughs> Thank you. Can, you. can everybody hear me? Yes. I'm going to change a little bit the topic of my speech because I had a chat with Angela two days ago who asked me to put this into context and explain why Affin is so important. So I've taken some notes which start with a kind of personal journey. 19 years ago, I was working in London in finance and I was frustrated. So I quit and I went back to university to do a master's in anthropology and development studies. I can tell you my father wasn't happy. <laughs> That master's was followed by um, an internship that took place in Ecuador. There you go for the journey. So I found myself in a rural area, 3,000 meters above sea water, uh, basically among the beautiful Andes Mountains, jumping from the back of the motorbike of the loan officer to the bus to going up the hill and down the hill in this mountainous area where farmers and small producers were basically the clients of the microfinance foundation I was working with. And this is where I learned first about social finance. Microfinance, the kind of finance I was looking for and I couldn't find in the corporate sector. And basically, life was great. I mean, I was in South America, I was in a, in, in the, in a beautiful place, and I was very inspired by what I saw there. Obviously, I mean, life couldn't get better, but it has to end. So after three months, I had to go back to Belgium, to winter, to rain, and to depression at first. But the lessons that I learned there kind of stuck to me. Because in a way, what I saw in, in Ecuador is that Organizations that were very dedicated to pro proximity finance were actually trying to do the right thing with their money every single time. So they were supporting the farmer who was making cheese instead of just selling milk. They were supporting the, the, the producer that was actually planting broccoli instead of potatoes because actually Carrefour would buy it of them and ship it to Europe. They were supporting the, the other farmer who was growing something that in English is called guinea pigs, it's kind of a big rat that they eat in Ecuador, and they were shipping them to Spain where a lot of Ecuadorians live, and actually when they miss home, they buy that frozen, and they get it from there. So basically, this idea of doing the right thing with your money is what stuck to me. And after that, I was uh, lucky to, to basically join another organization that took me around to work in microfinance in developing countries for a number of years, then I kind of recycled myself to microfinance in Europe, where we also have a number of problems, And then I ended up in ethical finance, which is something I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about now. So ethical finance is a bit different from microfinance in the sense that instead of focusing on the individual, on the entrepreneur, on the little business, let's say, it focuses more on the collective. It focuses more on the organization and what it can achieve. And it's kind of much more hybrid. The idea of ethical finance was coined by a bank in Italy, which is called Banca Popolare Etica, which actually was created by a movement of fair trade organizations, the church, the civil society, the cooperatives, the NGOs, and, and, and an endless list of people who were actually frustrated back in the early 90s with their banks because they would not bankroll their economic activities. So they decided to create their own bank. And that worked. I think today that wouldn't have worked, but it did then. And when they had a bank, they said, what should we do with this bank? It cannot just be like all the others. We have to do it differently. So they decided that the bank would be ethical. Ethical doesn't mean exactly social, it's a bit, it's a bit more. The idea is that the money that you're going to use for this bank has to come from the right, the right place. So from the beginning in the statutes, it is excluded that money cannot be accepted from any kind of illicit or illegal or strange source. It basically has to come from citizens or organizations that sort of believe in the project. It is a cooperative type of organization, so the people who participate are also in the governance, looking at the social economy principles that Victor was talking about. But it also defined where the money should go. 
and this money should go only to the real economy, only to social economy, only to things that create jobs, local development, and that are generally beneficial, positive to the environment and to society. So their perimeter, even if it's broad, at the same time is small. So it's a very concentrated effort. And you might say this is a bit too idealistic, but actually, 20 years later, this is a 1.5 billion bank worth balance sheet, and it basically is, a, is one of the biggest members that we have in our federation of 34 organizations working on ethical finance around Europe. Around 15 banks and around 15 non-banks and a few, let's say, associates or aspiring members. Which brings me a little bit to the idea that this idealism, it's about believing, which is the theme I want to take you on now with me, believing. So about three years ago, just before the pandemic, I received a call from Romania, from someone who's in the room, I don't know where he is now, Bogdan, and he said, um, Daniel, I would like to start a, a, an ethical bank. And I said, don't. Please don't. <laughs> because I've seen it fail in other countries. Today, banking regulation is so complicated that it's almost impossible to start a bank. You can maybe buy one, but starting one, you're just gonna fail, unless you have very, very deep pockets. Um, but I said, why don't you start a kind of ethical finance organization, something a bit smaller, more hybrid, more flexible, that maybe can grow by making a collective effort of what you have in Romania. And I thought that would be the end of the conversation. But then that was followed by another call, and then by a Zoom, and then by a joint application with ADV to a European project, and then by exposing ADV and Bogdan and Affin and everybody else to the best I could find in Europe they could learn from. And one of them is in the room, and I, I don't spoil the secret because it's just coming after me. But basically, we try to explain that this is not a question of um, finance per se. This is a question of believing. So as much as I started to believe in this idea of Affin, I decided to show it um, by fact. So I accepted to join the board of Affin, which is kind of what brings me today. Unfortunately, it comes with a trick that I have to do a presentation. But the idea of believing is, I think, the thread that we should use to grow not only the social economy sector, because it's something that has plenty of potential, as Victor said, but also a dedicated finance organization that emerges from the social economy sector, which is exactly what happened in all these countries where we said the social economy is very developed, in Italy, in France, in Spain, in Portugal, etc. The social economy developed as much as it developed its own tools to finance itself. 20 years down the line, of it's a different story, and many of the mainstream banks are now much more interested in social economy because it's a big sector. But when it was small, it had to create its own financing tools because nobody was going to, do, going to do it for them. And those people at the time believed. Believed in Italy, believed in Spain, believed in Belgium, believed in Ireland. Um, so on this, on this idea of believing, as much as I believe in Affin, I think many people around this room and beyond this room should also believe in Affin. Not only because you're going to need it, but it's also because you're going to own it. And it has no value. When it's a collective effort, on a social economy, let's say, point of view, you, know, you will grow with it. And profit will not be the end of the story. Profit will only be the beginning of the story because you will continue reinvesting it. <laughs> and in the beginning, it will be hard. I mean, I can tell you that. Many people will say, no, this is not going to work. But hey, it did work in Spain or in Italy or in France. And I was discussing with, uh, <laughs> with my neighbor, why did it work? It's not because there was a policy to do it or because some government decided to do it. It's because the government was actually not working very well. And people decided to organize themselves and to do it by themselves. And later on, policy adapted. <laughs> Which I think is my recommendation for Romania. So as much as I believe uh, in, in this project, I think that you should also work in convincing others because you cannot make enemies now. You have to be very, very open to convince the banks out there, the credit unions out there, the cooperatives out there, to make the movement as inclusive as you can because everyone can today or maybe tomorrow bring a little bit of, of a stone in building this, uh, this kind of new house of social economy. So I think that we are in a moment that if you believe, you can probably make it happen. And I've seen it fail before, really. I saw it in Croatia, I saw it in Portugal, members of ours really tried, 
Sometimes they went the wrong way. They started for the bank. They failed miserably. They started in, in, in trying to convince the government in Portugal, and they failed miserably. I think you can take those lessons, and we are kind of willing to provide them for free, in trying to find a middle way where it's basically the sector organizing itself, however small it is, who creates its own, basically, financial organization, which can accompany its growth and kind of, kind of grow with it. Because in a way, ethical banks do not see themselves as banks. We see ourselves as part of the social economy. We are part of the ecosystem, a different type of social enterprise whose product is money rather than insertion or, or whatever it is. So at the moment where we are, I would like to invite you to believe in Affin, to support it however you can, and to make sure others hear about it. And with this, I leave you here. Thank you very much. Molto mesk. Thank you so much uh, to saying such a beautiful story about social finance. It was a big surprise to present Afin in such a, a special way. Thank you, Donald. Și uh, știu că o să introduci tu. Eu spun acum că abia acum divulgăm secretul legat de cine este vecinul de scaun de care spunea mai devreme domnul da. Sorosal.